Hey there friends, what is happening? My name is Rabbit, and thank you so much for joining me for episode number 24 of Let's Semi Blindly Play Through Eternal Eyes on the PlayStation 1. In our previous episode, we are just keeping on with the keeping on as we are prepped and ready to head into the nether regions number three, which honestly is making me a bit nervous for this fairy Nos because we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper and we are seeing no signs that this fucking fairy is actually alive. So I'm beginning to become a bit suspicious and wary. Perhaps this fairy is evil or, you know, it very well could be that she is getting fucked and we are going to stumble upon some shit that we don't need to see. And by getting fucked, that could be either literally or figuratively. I guess there's only way to one way to find out and that is for us to actually tackle what lies ahead. So, let's see. I think we've seen those fairies before. Let's go ahead and assess our surroundings. You guys know the drill. Let's become acquainted with our foes as well as what spells that they have in tow. So this is Sylph. I, I don't remember what color the other version's hair was, but I think this puppet is adorable and I would love to have one, but I have no idea what it takes to make these and I'm certainly not gonna put forth the energy to find out. But it's got Medi and Shaker. We were introduced to Shaker as a new spell in our last episode. Nice to see it get used again. I don't know if we've seen this thing before. It's some kind of goblin looking ass. Its name is Mimi and it's got Grail as well as Grage, neither of which are totally new. We've seen those mushroom asses in our last episode. Huh, I feel like this isn't a lot of enemies on the map. That's kind of weird. But maybe we're just at the point where it really is just all stall, which, oh my gosh, you guys, that is what kickstarted my conversation episodes ago about working designs in the first place and then me talking about Lunar and then all this other random bullshit. I was sharing with you guys that stall, I think, can be so fucking lame and oh my god, I'm just so far away from everything. <laughs> We're just, you know, I guess it is what it is. What even? Ranjit is just a monster. I feel like I can't reach anything. Anything. <sighs> I'm gonna have to have Luke just pick his ass up and carry him with him because this is going to get old real quick. Him just moving like three grids every single turn. That's just why. But it's okay. It's okay, Rabbit. We have been through a lot and him being a slow ass is hardly a big deal. Okay, I need to pay attention. I need a four range ability. Icicle will do the trick, so get ready to get annihilated, little fairy critter. So yeah, I was talking to you guys a bit about stall and that I think, I don't remember if I was trying to talk specifically about this game or what, but one of the things that had popped in my mind and I think serves for me as one of the strongest examples of, oh my gosh, just shitty combat design and just shitty battles would be there was a specific fight in Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldeen and that's what I was saying because that was localized by Working Designs for the Sega Saturn and I love that game I think it's hilarious I think Working Designs stayed very true to their spirit of localizing things in a very ridiculous over-the-top cheeky way but I don't know for me yeah okay I acknowledge that it doesn't age as well as a literal translation but I find it hilarious and I can go back and play the game even now and laugh out loud at some moments it just I, I just find it exceptionally entertaining and I think they really wait a minute wait a minute that is a different one it's like a girl version of the Mimi wait a minute do you guys see this this little goblin thing in front of us so that one looks like a boy and it's running with like a bow and arrow. But this other one has long blonde hair. <gasps> How did I not see that? I was just assuming it was the same thing. Okay, well I stand corrected. Let me acknowledge you. So this is Nanai. It's so cool looking. It's got Nebula, Nebulas, and Mets. Ooh, Nanai. I wonder, hmm, is it supposed to be the female version of the Mimi? I mean, or they both could be women. I don't know. I guess I shouldn't make assumptions about anything, but it looks so similar in its design, not just its, I guess, colors and movements, but I don't know. It just looks like it's supposed to be the female version of the other thing, but you know, maybe it's not. I don't really know, and I, I don't have a whole lot, I guess, to stand on other than right now my initial impression of it, but so there was a fight in, we'll use 
Moose, Moose Fire. <laughs> Weird name for a spell, but okay. That fight that was in Albert Odyssey, and I think a couple of them really were bad about this, where enemies just blocked everything, and it wasn't even that they did a lot of damage to you, and so you were struggling to survive, and it was like a back and forth where it was like super close and very clutch. What it really was, was that you were going through the motions, and it just lasted for fucking ever. Like, I don't even know how to spice it up because there's really not a whole lot to say about it. Combat was just, oh my god, that fight was probably the longest fight I've ever had in a video game, and it was the worst one. It was just so long, so tedious. There was no diversity in terms of the abilities that the enemy put forth, and I think just the combat system in that game in general felt extremely underwhelming there just wasn't a whole lot going on and and for fights to take as long as they did it it was oh my gosh you guys it was like rubbing salt in your open gaping wound that fight just made me so upset but you know you survived it and it wasn't hard so you know it's not like you can argue that you're white knuckling it through it and you're stressed the whole time because maybe for some people being stressed in a boss fight is worse than being bored but i think for me because i do like a challenge and i do like to feel like i'm being engaged by whatever i'm playing or whatever I'm seeing or doing at that particular moment in time. So to just be sitting there and it wasn't even like mashing buttons, like you pretty much picked the same types of spells and you executed the same combinations and with the enemy just randomly and with no effort and it just, it didn't even make sense why this particular boss blocked like everything, almost everything. It was so weak and so shitty. But, you know, I guess I say all of that just to say that's an example of crappy combat design and boss design. And I wouldn't say that all games are kind of at one extreme or the other where it's that god awful as that particular fight. Nor have I played a lot of games where, you know, the fights have just been like, woo, this is the best battle I've ever been in. Like, no. I think there's, within those parameters, there's a nice variety present and you know sometimes you have a good hmm let me see do we want to let's do ignis again sometimes you have a good level of variety but sometimes you know it's <laughs> like a series of shitty fights even in one game i think sometimes you'll have one or two boss fights that are legit and you are just like holy crap that was a very well designed boss but then like boss number three you're just thinking like what in the hell like, who was responsible for this? I think an example of that, and maybe it's just because it's still fresh on my mind and I just recently wrapped up that playthrough, but I think Brave Fencer Musashi is an example where boss design was a bit all over the place, where there were some fights that just felt so good to play through, and the fights were engaging, they were exciting, you felt a little nervous at times, but it wasn't always just stress i think some t that motherfucker it just these mushrooms they're killing me you guys but now i'm gonna have to kill you but i think there were some of the fights in that game that oh my gosh i i liked them so much i would have wanted to replay them i thought the music was very appropriate it was it was cool because you felt like you were masashi and it just they did a very good job of making you feel immersed in the actual battle that was taking place and into the character Musashi himself. I I really loved so many of the fights from that game and how they built up to it, as well as how the fights themselves unfolded and then even how they concluded. It was just really well done. But then, it, in the same game, there would be a fight after like two or three good fights there'd be a boss fight where it's just exceptionally underwhelming and you're just kind of scratching your head like this is boring and it's very unimaginative and it doesn't even really fit the theme of the world that you're in but i mean not to criticize too harshly because i do think that brave fencer musashi is one of the best games i've played in a very long time and I just, I don't know, I loved every minute of my playthrough, and I think part of it is nostalgia, because 
you have such strong memories of some of these games, or at least for those of you that are like me and you grew up playing these as a young child or watching people play them. So to undertake them from start to finish on your own for the first time and you still have those positive memories and those happy memories it just makes the experience even more powerful and it makes it more potent i think for your spirit because it's not even just you playing the game you almost feel like you're replaying memories as well so it's like watching home videos and home movies and playing something new for the first time it just i don't know how to describe it but that was kind of what i felt the entire time i was making my way through that game so i i love brave fencer musashi and I think, you know, some people might not think it deserves a 10 out of 10. I would say anything between a 9 and a 10 out of 10 is fair, with 9.5 probably being more balanced of a score. But anyway, finally, we met this freaking fairy, Nas. Welcome, brave crimson eyes. Where are you? Oh, she's cute. Hi, I'm here. Thanks for getting rid of those pests. Um, you're Nas, the fairy? That's me, eternal eyes. Nice to meet you. I've come to see you about something. How sweet. Very polite, too. You really take after Neil and Rufia? Are those our parents? You knew my parents? Yes, of course. We fought together in the war. Not something I'd forget. So, what can I do for you? Tell me whatever you want. Really, bitch? You can't just open by referencing my long-lost parents or possibly deceased parents and then be like, So, what are you here for? What do you want to talk about? Like, bitch. So, Luke explained everything it says what had been happening, but I think it's supposed to say that had been happening about the King of Gross and about Elena. Ah, uh, that's not good. I knew the seal was weakening, but heavens, I'm slow, but you can't blame me. People don't always tell me what's going on, but I would never have thought the King would be defeated. What about my sister? Is there anything? There is one way to save your sister, but it certainly isn't simple to perform. First, we need the Rod of Life. Whoa, hey, I've got a Rod of Life right here for you, Nas. To revive the body, and then Angel Blood to complete the spell. Got it. If it's to save my sister, I'll get everything that's needed. Slow down, slow down. Before anything else, you need the Rod of Life. To get that, head for the Land of Light. Once you've found the Rod, go and see the girl at Gross. Great, thank you for everything. So will I find both items there? It's a little vague, Nas. I could use more direction. Oh, and... You've got beautiful eyes. They're as clear as a mirror. A rare eternal eyes with miraculously formed eyes. You'll definitely be able to save your sister. I'm sure. Definitely. Aw, that was really sweet of her. I mean, I love it when people stroke my ego. Oh, back to the bad guys. I kind of forgot about y'all. Hey, Ceres, does the summoning of soldiers of death look possible? What about that regalia of knowledge? Does it look useful? I have already obtained the knowledge. There's no doubt about what Lord Vorlis says. All there's left now is to call upon the souls of the dead and resurrect the soldiers of death. What the hell exactly are they trying to accomplish? How long is it going to take? A night should be enough to summon a thousand soldiers or so. A thousand? That's a lot of zombies to command. She might want to rethink this. Oh no. Why is Vorlis always so calm, like, no big deal? Lord Vorlis, I don't care. See, exactly, he doesn't give a fuck about anything. Luna is awakening. My strength is increasing. I'm returning to Billy Island. Lord Vorlis, Lolita? Are all of them trying to smash? Is that also what's kind of going on? I'm not sure what that cutscene was attempting to convey, but hey, we're now in chapter six, the land of light. I wonder, is it just gonna thrust us forward? <laughs> hey, no pun intended, since we've been talking about nether regions for like three episodes. But I'm curious, where is this land of light? Is it just another region that's gonna open on the map? Seems so. How was it, Luke? Did you see the fairy? Yeah, she said to rescue Elena, I need the rod of life, which lies somewhere in the land of light. Land of light, that's at the very end of the earth. You're not going to be able to get there easily. Thanks, Mouse. I really appreciate your comforting words. We'll come with you. You'll be lonely by yourself, and we should be able to help. Thank you, both of you. Let's start getting ready, then. Y'all always say this, but then you never actually do anything with me. You're just kind of there. I mean, I guess everyone needs a squad, right? Everyone needs those cheerleaders in the background making you feel legit. 
And it's good to have bros, right? And what do you have to say? I feel like I see you a lot and then I just don't talk to you. When I think about it, I haven't seen Elena around. Is she ill or something? Uh, she'll be back, she'll be back. Don't you worry. But all right, friends, we will, I'm trying to debate if I want to do any, I have a couple of jewels, but I doubt I have enough to really make anything go down. I can see items, great. Oh shit, this is not what I meant to do. Uh, but you know what, we should probably check out the shops too, and I have some crap that I need to sell because my inventory is a hot mess. What the actual fuck, did I not look at this? Okay, this is what I wanted to open up, the illustrated magical puppet book, because we do have a few new forms now since we've last been here, and I think it would be nice just to see the descriptions for them. So Jackal's still chilling. I think I still have two non-animated dolls. Ah, Few was the name of what Haresh was, the little ghost thing I was referencing. You know, just to bring it back full circle for those of you that didn't know what I was talking about. Okay, so Good Sleep was the bat and he turned into Joker. So Parents is Good Sleep, Exa of Evo. I, I don't know what that means and not a freaking clue. But true form is unclear. A legend says it is death. Few reports of sightings. Well, I've got one in my party, so hopefully people don't panic too much. Let's see, para para, head, dogu, one. Here we go. So I don't know where this thing comes from. Parent is Justin. So this does come back to what I was saying earlier that I think there are a lot of branching paths, but some of them loop back around each other or I guess double dip into the same stream of evolutionary lines. So that's interesting. I have no idea what the hell Justin is and why a puppet would be named Justin, but you know, again, we'll just take it for what it is, but a magical figure made of clay. Use is unclear. Mysterious ancient letters are carved on it. Okay. And I think that's it. Cause we looked at Abilash when we first got him. So that is all darlings. I just wanted us to look at that and we won't worry about tinkering with puppets right now. I'm not getting any of the old slash new ones that we found just because reasons I already said, I'm not gonna be fucking around here trying to get these level one puppets up to where I've got my current puppets. There just isn't a reason for it. But I do want to talk to my bros before we go to the shop. If we try to fight with Saris, we'd be more of a hindrance than a help. Oh, he's talking about the henchman of Vorless. How did you know her name? We'll do all we can to help and we'll try not to be a hindrance to Luke. If you are beaten, Luke, we won't be able to save Elena. Yes, I'm fucking aware. You two are truly just a part of the squad just to be a part of the squad. Like, I don't know how much you really bring to this team or to the party. But it's okay, as long as I've got my puppets, I guess we don't really need them to do much other than just be there. But we will go ahead and round off this episode by quickly peeping the wares at the item shop and clearing out our inventory because you guys know I get a little anxious about my, my backpacks looking like bullshit and it, they're looking rough right now, all of the different subcategories of my backpack. Hello, what are you looking for today? Well, first, I want to sell the shit I'm not using, which would include these black blades, get out of here. I don't need the ace blade. I guess I could keep the mithril bow, like one of them, in case I wanna switch up what Luke's doing. So I will go ahead and keep one. Let me not just fully throw everything away. But as for the rest of this, that's got to go. Mail of darkness. I don't know why I haven't used that. Or did I have it before? Hold on, y'all. Let's check this out. Why do I not have the Mail of Darkness equipped? Oh my god. I can't equip anything unless I'm in specific menus. Have I mentioned to you guys how much I hate that? That I don't know why they made this so weird. But okay. So the description said that it... Hold up. Have I been sleeping on this? Said to have been made for the Lord of Darkness, absorbs high amounts of damage. I wonder, did I not utilize this because base stats don't seem that great? But, I don't know what, here, let me just unequip it as usual so we can do a side by side. So this brings up defense quite a bit, but there's really only a five point difference between the two in terms of defense. The real difference, it seems, ha! Huh, comes to HP. Why have I not been using the Mail of Darkness? What has been my problem? I mean, not that, let's be real, it's mattered and it would have made a humongous difference in terms of how this fights, how these fights have been unfolding for us, but 
Oh my god. Let's do accessories next. Okay, I don't need this. Don't need this. I, you know, I'm just getting rid of everything that's not... Because I'm not even using any of these. Like, why even keep them? I think the perfume's okay, but I'm just gonna... Increases your attack hit rate. I'll keep one of those. I will keep... Oh my god. Beautiful earring. I, you know, fuck it. I'm not keeping all these. I don't need them. And honestly, there's a point where you really can only be utilizing so many objects at one time, you know? So, oops. I'll, ke I'll keep this collar of power even though I... You know what? Fuck it. We're getting rid of this. I will keep one perfume because I think it actually is a decent item. Not to say that the other ones weren't fine, but everyone's already good to go. So let's see what she's got. Oh God, I'm not trying to buy your bullshit. Oh, nothing really that great. Artemis, a bow once offered to the goddess of hunting can catch even a swiftly moving object. That's kind of cool. And then angel bow. Are these all bows? It looks like it. Huh, a bow with an aura of sacred light has the power to make people fall in love. I don't know if I need to be using that on the battlefield though. And then Mithril Blade. Ah, I think what I've got is good. We've seen this a few times that purchasing items, it's not necessarily a bad decision because, oh God, because you end up with so much mica. I mean, just look at us right now. We almost have 40K. We're just a few, a few pieces shy of that. I just, I don't know. We have so much money. It just... It wouldn't matter if we just upgraded some things, but I don't think I really want to worry about it. Made of light animal hair has sacred protective power. Eh. Nope. I'm not going to buy any of this. Maybe some accessories will be good. Ooh, I do need to increase what... What does he have? No, he has a war mallet or a war hammer, I think. I don't know if Big Blow is going to be better. Collar of ice, collar of protection. Eh. Yeah, you guys, I still am not feeling most of these. But I don't know. I guess it doesn't hurt for us to check it out. Why is the wooden mallet better? Oh, because your HR goes down. Which, oh, HR might be hit rate, you guys. Am I stupid? Have we seen this before? <laughs> don't answer either of those. Okay, wooden mallet. It doesn't do as much. Oh, it doesn't lower... HR is hit rate, SP is speed. Okay, probably because it's heavier. So attack is better for big blow by 10 points compared to the wooden mallet, but your speed goes down 10 more than it does with the wooden mallet. And then HR takes the, an equal dive with the two of them. You know what, whatever. I I don't know what the Warhammer is doing for. Is there a way for me to even see this here? Um. Okay, there is a way for me to check it out. Oh, God, these menus are so non-intuitive that there's like five different ways to access different menus, but then other ones won't let you access them. It's just like, who, who is responsible for this yet again? Uh, I just want to see your equipment. Warhammer. Oh, I'm going to have to try to sell it. You know what? Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> we're, we're leaving it as it is. If it's going to take this much effort to do it and there's not a major incentive for me to spend this time doing it, I'm not fucking around with it. So we're out of here. Sorry, Haresh. Maybe one of those mallets would have honestly been a nice upgrade for you. But he's fucking monsters up left and right anyway. So he doesn't need to sweat it too much. But all righty, darlings. Let's get going. And at least see what this area of light is. Whatever it's called. Oh, it's all the way up here. Oh, no, it's not. Stone ruins? Goondocks, Gross Kingdom, Lost Forest, Hall of Dolls. Oh, so this is where we're supposed to go? Stone ruins? Very weird. But, I mean, it's the only new area on the map, so we're just going to roll with it. So, anyway, my darlings, my name is Rabbit. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Let's Play Semi-Blindly, Eternal Eyes on the PlayStation 1. I'm eagerly looking forward to catching up with you in video number 25, where we will just go forward into the stone ruins and see if we can find... This is just going to be one of the two items we need, so I'm not sure if we need to find this first object and then we bring it back to Nos in the Misty Forest and then she will give us direction regarding where the other one is or if she's looking for that other one. I don't fucking know, but as always, we will find out together shortly. So take care, be good, and I'll see you guys in just a moment in episode number 25 where we will keep this story going.